Welcome to Shorty Supercoach, and it's 2023, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Oh, I'm I'm pushing it pretty deep tonight. I'm bloody tired, but I said to myself, Shorty, you got to do a video today, mate. And here we are, a bit later than I anticipated. We'll have this one uploaded tomorrow. But hope you guys had a good night last night. Pretty solid for myself. It wasn't anything too crazy. The last two I've spent in Brisbane and Gold Coast, and it was a more low key version, but I quite liked it, I must admit. Still had a few drinks, plenty of banter, a few good tunes, but woke up a bit better than I probably normally would. Um, but no, I spent it with a really good crew. Um, we had a good time, so it was good fun. But if you did wake up like absolute trash, yeah, credit to you. Credit to you, I respect that. Has to be done sometimes, but yeah, I was actually somewhat surprised that I was I was tucked into bed about two o'clock which is unusual I was half tempted to go into town I was half tempted but um, nah, I got the ride home and just just called it a night but um, had to work today which is a bit of a stitch up as well that wasn't too much fun but credit to a couple absolute lads a couple absolute legends I went I was delivering to Teesdale went to the um, what the post office general store there I said, I'd deliver them to them. I said, oh, do you mind if I just get an egg and bacon roll as well? Went out, got me wallet. They're like, nah, this one's on us. Grab yourself a water as well. I was like, legend. And then I had a delivery in um, Inverley, I think it was. And yeah, the bloke was like, gee, mate, it's hot out here. Do you want a water? Do you want a, do you want a Coke or something? And I already had my water. So I was like, you know what, brother? I'll take that Coke. Thank you very much, my friend. Much appreciated. But um yeah, it was a um, bit of a slow day today, a bit of a slow day. This morning I went and bought a stand-up paddleboard. It was pretty random, but I'm looking to get into that. And then, yeah, just worked for a bit. It wasn't a big shift or anything, but just, yeah, really sort of kicked back. And, and tonight's been pretty chill, a bit of tennis on. And then I'm just going to watch, I'll do this video. And then I'm going to watch the Cats and Richmond. Just chuck on a couple of those quarters from earlier this year. The one where Jack Henry just grabs that and slots it late in the game. Ripping game, probably the best game for the season, just about certainly from the Cats' point of view, in terms of a product of the game, it was an absolute ripper. So, I'm looking forward to watching that. But, um, yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments below any Giants players that you reckon are on the market on your radar. But more importantly, let me know what you got up to last night, whether you had fun, whether you didn't. Hopefully, you did. But, on a scale of one to ten. How dusty were you this morning? Because I, I woke up at 6.30, which was disgusting. Went back to sleep eventually, but oh, I was crook at 6.30. Not actually, but I was feeling poor. But then we got a few more hours of sleep and we were good. So it was great. Anyway, um, I won't waffle on too much for this one because we do have a few Giants players to go through. Last couple of previews, Geelong, Gold Coast, not as many players came to mind, but sometimes you will look at a club and there's quite a few, and the Giants are one of those. In particular, one man, big-bodied mid, potential breakout contender. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Very keen to talk about him soon. So we'll get stuck into it, because there is a bit to cover, time-stamped as usual. Um, but the Giants are a tough one. They had a really poor year, worse than they would have expected, and they lost a few. You know, Taranto and Hopper, two key midfielders gone. And with that comes great opportunity for someone to fill the void. So there is points and center bounce attendance on offer here. And we want to find out who's going to benefit most from that. But let's start off with a bloke who's a known product, and that's Stephen Cornelio. Now, he was fantastic last year. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Had a return to form after a real shock in 2021 and was about as good a selection as you could possibly hope for. Cheap as chips, and then turns into a bloke you can keep all year. Outstanding stuff. He had some whopping scores in there, 149 in round 3, 174 in round 13, and he was just very consistent. He did have stages, particularly in the first half of the year, where he was a bit more half-forward flank. wasn't amazing. And then we saw him absolutely explode with the centre bounce attendance in the second half of the year. If I can just type properly, that'd be fantastic. And then I can show you what I mean. But I'm sure the numbers will back this up. Center bounce doesn't always mean good points, but it just gives a good indication of where they fit into that midfield and um, that pecking order in the midfield minutes. But I'm sure we'll see 
Cornelio involved a hell of a lot more after sort of round eight and nine. Yeah, absolutely, even round 10. So not so much. First couple of rounds, yes. Then that more half forward style of roll. And then particularly after the buy, just insane centre bounce numbers. And it was reflected in the points. He barely went under 100 only a couple of times. And in the end, round 23 was his worst one. So he retains mid forward status. We'll get him at a price this time. But I do think he's a great option. It's hard to go wrong with him. There's a lot of good options in that forward line. So he's just one of them. He's a premium and he's here to stay as a premium. Don't see those midfield minutes changing at all. So you can definitely build your team around him. Now I'll tell you what, this is the bloke we want to talk about. Tom Green. Super exciting prospect. Real Clayton Oliver sort of vibes here. Now we've seen him just steadily grow. We saw him debut in that first season with some great footy. We saw him have massive influences for such a young play. You know, round 17 against the D's, 119 in his fifth game of footy. And a lot of us were thinking, could he really explode in 2021? Didn't quite happen. For a range of reasons, it was a pretty deep midfield at the Giants. Now, last year, we saw him start like a house on fire. Had a 160 in there, I think. Oh, round one, 164. <laughs> Welcome, couple of goals. But those first, what, six, seven weeks insane even the eighth week you know 96 then there was a bit of fatigue now particularly in the um, mid to late period of the year definitely didn't get the same opportunities in the midfield and I'm not even sure why I think at one stage he even got dropped did he miss a game round 19 I've got a feeling yeah yeah shocking game there I've got a feeling he got dropped or rested or managed whatever you want to call it but he wasn't playing the footy he was at the start of the year. And we did see him even playing forward at times, which is bizarre. But Taranto and Hopper go, and Tom Green will be the biggest beneficiary of that. Not only is it midfield minutes on offer, but the exact so sort of player. Like Hopper and Taranto, particularly Taranto, they're looking for the same position. You know, Green wants to be getting that inside mid time. You can't have Green, Taranto and Hopper in the one centre bounce because they're too similar. Same with Callan Ward. Like You've got to have that variety. Tom Green now becomes the guy. I, I think he's real Clayton Oliver vibes. I'm not saying he's going to come out and average 120. But we saw that mini breakout. And I think there's a really, really big chance that he could take his average to 110. I know what you're thinking, Shorty. That's a bit hectic. But I think a few people will agree with me now. Obviously, he's at a relatively awkward price because we're not getting much value. But if he averages 110, we're getting a hell of a lot of value. So it depends which way you look at it. If you said, Shorty, what's he going to average? I'd say probably 108, 109. But there is potential to be even more. And there's obviously risk that it doesn't happen because we're, we're potentially picking a guy to become a premium that's never done it before. But he looks absolutely destined to. So there is risk because... You know, he's never done it before, he's 21, but everything looks to be pointing towards Tom Green, getting plenty of inside ball, plenty of opportunity in that midfield. I'll tell you what, he's going to be hard to turn down. He's going to be real hard to turn down. He's, he's come back lean, looking fit, strong. He's strongly in my mix. I think last team pick I did, he was in there. So yeah, he's a guy that, of all candidates to take their average up beyond 110 or even beyond 100, you know, to lift at 15 points, there's not too many better candidates than this fella. I mean, he's he's born for the inside pill. So keep him high on your radar. Let's just track him. But he's a very promising young lad. So let me know, is Tom Green about to explode onto the scene? Because I think he's as good option as you're likely to see to take his game from good scorer to absolute premium let me know now i won't to i won't spend too much time on these last four guys i think they're unlikely to be in our teams but are worth mentioning Isaac coming really was a surprise packet for mine started to take the kick-ins and really showed what he was all about these last couple of years i must admit i didn't really expect to see him average these sort of numbers and he really showed a, a great consistency now He's probably more of a draft option, but I just wonder, 
could he continue to build? Like we saw him, we saw him build a little bit on his average from the year before, but he still can chuck in these games where he just scores, you know, 71, 45, 62. He can still throw in those lower ones and he doesn't have much of a ceiling. So that's all I'd say with him because to average 95, basically, there's nothing to sneeze at. There's nothing wrong with that. But we probably don't want to pick a guy at that price to just average 95. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but down back, I, I do feel like there's a lot of guys who can definitely average high 90s or, or 100. So I don't think we really want to purchase him at, at that price. There's really not much to get excited about in terms of improvement. But I just wonder, do, do you see improvement from him? That's why I thought I'd put him in there because we saw a mini rise in his numbers. He's still young. Could he continue to build on that role? Could he get that up to 96, 97, 98? And then all of a sudden, he's a really good option. He's still good at 94.7. Nothing wrong with that, like I said. But for me, it doesn't absolutely light my fire to start with him. But he could be a really safe, solid option for your draft team. But again, he's a nice user of the ball. It'd be really interesting to see if he continues to become that main man out of the back line or if he's just a bit part player and just links up when he can. I'm not sure if he's an absolute distributor just yet, but he definitely is trusted with the ball in the back half for the, for the Giants. So someone to just keep your eye on. Interesting young player coming through. Now here's a burn man, Braden Bruce. Fuck you now. They don't burn you better than Braden. Boy, oh boy, he he's roasted a few over the journey. Absolute singed. I've absolutely been singed by this man. Look at this. Look at this ton, ton, ton. The bloke's tonning up all day, but he misses footy, mate. He, call, he scores 17. He comes back. He's good again. Fuck. He kills you. He kills you, this bloke. I mean, in theory, he was a pretty good selection. He missed the start of the year, but when he came in and some people held him, you know, some people brought him in. He was great, but he finds a way to let you down, and he'll do it again. So just just calm down. Don't pick him. But I just wanted to put him in there because on pure numbers, there's everything to say that if this bloke can stop knocking people out and getting suspended or getting injured, there's no reason he can't average 105. And one year, he'll click, and he will average some massive stuff. But I tell you what, I'm not going to buy a ticket to that ride and try and just find the absolute lucky ticket to actually land it when he does pull it together for a year because picking that, God, who knows? Because he's nearly 28. He's no spring chicken. So we've been waiting a while and we saw a glimpse of what he can do. He's a massive man, gets a fair bit of contested possession. And, you know, he's he's real Shane Mumford style. It's funny how he is at the Giants and he's very much like him. You know, he'll, he'll get in and under. He's, he's not sort of your... Tim English roaming around the ground guy, but he can take contested marks. He'll just grab it out of the ruck, boot it around, get your contested ball, and he can, on his day, have some huge hit-out numbers, which often correlated to some of his highest scores. So he's someone to certainly think about more so from a draft point of view. But boy, oh boy, if you're feeling brave, if you're feeling lucky, Oh, I dare you to select him in Classic, but gee, I'm not endorsing it. Don't come back to me and say, Shorty, you talked me into it. Don't say that. I'm saying steer clear. But draft, he might be okay. <laughs> draft, you need durability as well, so it's not ideal, but he's he's potentially going to slip through and you might be able to get him. He's going to score if he plays, put it that way. But can he, can he put together 18-plus games ever? You be the judge of that. I'm not, I'm not so sure. Now, here's a player. We reference blokes who could get a chance to really blossom with Taranto and Hopper gone. Who's going to step up? Well, this fella could. I think he's priced around 240 or something. Like, it's awkward because he did play some footy last year. But Finn Callahan is a bloke that I feel like in Victoria we don't know much about. But those who really follow their footy will know. Big body inside mid type, high draft selection, never got the chance to really show those skills last year, five games, 55 average, but this bloke, look at look at his 189 and 82 kegs, the kid's 19, 
I mean, that's a big unit for 19 years old. So my main concern with him at the moment is that I believe he's injured. So I think um, he went in for surgery or, or something. Delayed start to pre-season after foot something. I'm guessing foot surgery. So that's my only concern. So yeah, foot surgery, I mean, how long will that put him out for? You know, you guys can wait and see and read the articles and get the updates when he'll be back. But bit of a concern because I always like when you're looking for a guy to just really come out and, and break out you really want them to have a good preseason under their belt. Now, this breakout's different to Tommy Green. We're looking Greeny to go for, to a keeper. But what we could get with Callahan is a bloke who goes, turns that average from 55 to probably 80, around 80, 85, which I don't think is ridiculous, particularly if he does get a role in that midfield. I don't think it's crazy. We've seen talented top 10 picks come in and make an impact in their first year. Nothing to say with a good preseason once he gets back out there, a good block of eight, ten weeks, that he can't do that as well. So I haven't seen him play much. I've mainly just seen highlights from his draft year. But we know the memo. We know what he wants. We know the type of player he can be from everything they tell us. But this guy's a big watch in preseason. And, and look, there's a few guys like, you know, you got Filippo, you got Ashcroft, you got Will Phillips, um, a bit more expensive, you sort of got your Cooper Stevens and your Finn Callahan. So it's interesting to see which way we go, and, and it'll be just defined by how their pre seasons are and how excited we can sort of get about them. But definitely have this bloke right in your thoughts because talent can't be denied, and all of a sudden that talent is going to be matched with opportunity. So if he's good enough, then he should get some really good chances to show us what he can do. And just finally, Lockie Ash. Now, he's 21, and, and again, he's a different type of, mid, of a midfielder to your Greens and Callahan's. I mean, Ash is... He's got that speed. He's got that impact. He's played off halfback before. I just wonder where he's going to fit in eventually. The kid can play. There's no doubt about that, but I'm not sure we've really seen it consistently. Oh, we've seen bits and pieces, but again, he's a guy who's you know pick four once upon a time. I'm not sure we've really consistently seen it from week to week. I reckon we've seen quarters or passages of play and the odd game where you go, yeah, that's what he's about. But I feel like there's been a few years where we've said, yeah, Lockie Ash, this could be his year. This could be where we see him really go bang. But it's never happened. 59, 68, and then he, from a numbers point of view, in super coach, he went backwards. I don't know enough about him. Didn't see enough Giants games to say whether he went backwards or not. But... He established himself as a best 22 footballer with his last two years, playing 21 games each. Can he go from just part of the team to a genuine impact player and start changing some games like a pick four should? So I reckon we've definitely seen um, the talent he's got. It's just about him consistently doing it. So again, he could benefit from a bit more opportunity. I'm not exactly sure where he lands in the giant side at this point in time but again him and a few other blokes we've mentioned there's a big watch on their pre-season just keep an eye on them how are they looking what sort of nick have they come back in but most importantly where's the coach see him? you know where's he going to play him um so that's the most important thing and you know it's january we can't really say too much until we start seeing some games or hearing a bit of talk but callahan ash they've got to be in your thinking one thing i will say with ash is he's way more awkward price. So from a price point of view, I'd almost rule him out. It's too awkward unless he really shows us, gee, this is his year. You'd have to be pretty gutsy. But I just wanted to mention him because I feel like we've talked about him a bit. So I just wanted to put him on the radar just to have a think about, see how he's looking pre-season. But I will wrap it up there because time has got away from me. It is 11.30 and... Uh, I might just get one quarter of footy in after it's all said and done. But that's the beauty. No work tomorrow. So I don't have to be too firm on the timelines for bed. So, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate it as always. I had a bit more to get through that um, time. So hopefully you've enjoyed it with a few more players to talk about. But like I said, if I've missed someone or if you're a really big fan of someone in the Giants lineup, please let me know. 
I'll be back with plenty of videos, more previews, and a few other bits and pieces. Happy to hear your ideas, and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.